everyone, and I do mean everyone, like even down to the most casual fan, knows, not just, that the MCU has a villain problem, but they know why they have a villain problem. And I think that's why it's become a bit of a running gag. I mean, if you can not just identify the problem, but also the cause, why the heck don't you fix it, right? Well, I think that's because the main cause of the problem is unfixable without killing the whole thing, and that's ownership by Disney. Disney can't go full villain. Well, actually, as you're about to see when we discuss Warner Brothers, it's more that they won't go full villain. They're convinced it's off-brand, just like someone has sadly begun to convince Warner Brothers that it's off-brand, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, when you think about all the benefit that the MCU gets by being owned by Disney, well, it's not such a bad trade, and perhaps fandom moviegoers realize this, which is why they just joke about the MCU villain problem instead of aggressively complaining about it. <laughs> and it's not just the Disney ownership that contributes to the MCU villain problem. There's also the fact that their best villains are stuck over at Fox. Well, at least for now. What was I just saying about the benefits of being owned by Disney? They can cut a big check and they're tenacious SOBs, particularly Bob Iger. Iger and Feige, a dynamic duo at the enemy of the studio and comic book company that coined that term. Anyway, uh, Fox has though, to be fair here, Fox has used those villains quite a bit at this point, right? And in many cases, multiple versions of them. So even if uh, Disney Marvel, or when they do get them back, uh, they'll be used. Then, then on top of all that, the MCU has proven time and time again, and perhaps this is part of the Disney situation, and that's that they just can't resist a good anti-hero, right? Why have a villain when you can have an anti-hero? We've seen it happen time and time again. And therefore, to date, the Avengers' worst enemy has been themselves. So yes, we not only know that the MCU has a villain problem, but we understand it. But you know what we don't understand? You guessed it! Why the heck the DCEU has a villain problem, right? I mean, Warner Brothers, they have no such restrictions. Well, at least you know, in the past, they've been willing to go there. For instance, the Harry Potter movies, they've gone very dark for the Harry Potter films. And you know how Disney goes around saying, well, we have to be able to put these characters in our theme parks. Well, I'm pretty sure the Wizarding World of Harry Potter is a success. In fact, it started the theme park wars between Universal and, uh, you know, Universal being Warner Brothers proxy in this case, they all have to team up against Disney, but versus Disney. So Dark does sell even in the theme park merchandise space. Uh, and they have been able, they have been willing to go dark in the past with DC movies, uh, although again, as I said, someone's managed to convince them that was a mistake. Uh, the Dark Knight is very dark and was one of the first billion dollar pictures it's not a problem. In fact, people were upset with the lighter elements that were introduced into the Justice League movie. Uh, but then, in addition to being owned by Warner Brothers, which in the past has had no such restrictions in terms of darkness, not all, Warner Brothers not only has all the rights to the characters uh, from, from DC, but DC has the best villain library in all of comics. So why, why oh why, are they fighting CGI mess after CGI mess? Although, I still maintain that Enchantress has potential. Well, one problem, or so we're gonna we're gonna break down the, the DCEU villain problem and then I'm going to suggest some. Alright, so one huge problem is that Marvel keeps beating them to the punch. Uh, and you might be like, but you just said that Marvel had an MCU, uh, the MCU had a, a villain problem. Well, they've managed to also still create a problem for the DCEU. So, Giganta, would you like to do Giganta? Uh, uh, Ant-Man already did that. Maxwell Lord, oops, the best thing to come out of the Marvel Netflix shows. How about the new gods, Apocalypse or New Genesis? Oh, too late, already coming this summer to every theater near you. Damn it, <laughs> so who's left? And who has a chance of being taken seriously by today's audiences who, for the most part, would like a little bit more sophistication to their storytelling, right? Well, as I said, I have some ideas. So first off, Brainiac. Now, I know he's already on Krypton, the, the new show on sci-fi, but thankfully I don't think anybody's watching that. Also, while I appreciate that the sci-fi version is lovingly rendered from the comics, that's not what I have in mind for the DCEU. I want Michael Fassbender in Alien Covenant Brainiac. That one scene where David looks down on the alien planet before releasing the virus, you know which one I'm talking about, because every DC fan got goosebumps because we could see the greatness that was possible. Then, 
I'm thinking intergang. Now, I know this might be a bit familiar to audiences after the reimagining of the Vulture in Spider-Man Homecoming. It was a lot like intergang, in fact. But while that was an amazing start, and again, an amazing re reimagining of the Vulture, the movie didn't really turn that idea up to an 11. I mean, really, how many alien weapons did you see used? Not that many. So that leaves room for the DCEU to showcase Bruno Mannheim and his intergang, mobsters, who level up with apocalypse technology. They could even modernize intergang, going from the mob to an actual gang, just like Suicide Squad did so cleverly. Say what you will about Suicide Squad, but David Ayer did an excellent job modernizing decades-old characters, taking this mob motif and going to modern-day gang warfare. It's fabulous. Then, I really like the inner gang idea, okay? Because, uh, you know, I think it puts, like, really uh, complex, interesting, relatable villains up against these, the, these gods, the Justice League, which I think are more godly, um, and I think would make these, character, these villains feel they need to level up more so than the Avengers, right? All right, so then, hear me out on this next one. The Royal Flush Gang. Now, while they never really work in the comics, in fact, whenever I see them in the comics, I'm like, oh, what a lame group of villains. Whenever I see them in animation, I'm impressed. They, DC Animation has done a great job with these characters. And I think they could be, speaking of reimagining, I think they could easily be reimagined as steampunks or maybe Dapper Dans, right? That's very on trend. And vintage, by the way, hasn't really been explored too much in comic book movies. But they still have awesome technology. We're talking about a group of villains that are incredibly cinematic. Those playing cards flying through the air, it will be amazing. And it's also a group of villains that have not yet been done on the big screen in any way. So I think they're a great choice. And then next up, Brother I. The DCEU could totally get it. its hal on, right? Now, sure, the OMAX could be more CGI messes for our DC, uh, DCEU heroes to fight, but maybe they could be better designed this time? Plus, remember Batman's former bodyguard turned love interest, Sasha Bordeaux? I love comics. So soap opery sometimes. She was a great character. Really good. It's a shame that, um, well, I I'm about to suggest what eventually stuck her on the wayside, but she was a cool character for, for a while there. But anyway, she was turned into a human OMAC hybrid. That could be really cool. Just think Terminator instead of Ultron. Although I do think that the MCU was also thinking Terminator, but just failed miserably. Again, they could not or would not allow themselves to go there. Uh, OMAC and Brother Eye totally could. It's, you know, it's Terminators and Skynet. That's exactly what it is. Someone's got to do it right. You know, I don't know. <laughs> the DCEUs, when you think of someone doing something right, unfortunately, these days, you don't think of the DCEU. Then, while Christopher Nolan already brought the Al Ghouls to the silver screen, that's not technically the DCEU. So, let's try again with Ra's al Ghul, Talia, and the League of Assassins. And this time, we could even cast regionally appropriate actors. I think that would go over really well. It would lead to great fight sequences, elegant settings, uh, and also start the ball rolling on that Damian Wayne storyline. Yes, as a huge Damian Wayne fan, I have ulterior motives with this suggestion. And then, last but not least, with villains we've already got, let's avoid turning Joker and Harley into anti-heroes, shall we? I mean, you not only have Loki as a giant warning, I mean, look, they ran out, they ran out of places to go with him as an anti-hero, right? Uh, but also, look at the comics. Look how girl power Harley Quinn has proven to ultimately be boring and lame. So two-dimensional. You took a character that was very three-dimensional and fascinating to explore and, and made her, you know, I don't know, she's, she's still, she still sells, she's very popular, but can't we get a happy medium here? Okay, and then while Lex Luthor might need a break, let's bring in DC's female version of the character, Wonder Woman villain, Veronica Kale. Wonder Woman, you know, you wouldn't think it, but Wonder Woman actually has a great group of villains, thanks to Greg Rucka, who modernized all of them brilliantly in his um, DC Rebirth run. If you haven't read that, you really should. It should be, it should be, someone should send that pa to Patty Jenkins and say, you're welcome, it's that good. Uh, so uh, not only are my top picks of the villains from that run, Veronica Kale, but also the ancient sorceress Circe, think more Puck than Enchantress there, and then of course the cursed Cheetah, who we're getting 
with Kristen Wiig uh, bringing her to life in Wonder Woman 2. And we hope that we don't end up calling uh, for a redo of that villain in the near future. Uh, we're also upcoming, we're also getting Black Manta and Dr. Savannah in the Shazam movie, and we're holding our breath for those uh, versions of the characters as well. Uh, so that's the current state of DCEU villainy. What do you think of the villains you've already got? What do you think of the ones that are on deck? And who do you think should be brought in going forward? Share your thoughts down below. Not only your thoughts on my suggestions again, but your own. Uh, and then of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.